it's David Braid, and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to resize an image using OpenCV. So if you actually think about, you know, resize and where exactly can we see this process being used in real life, you can think of it like when you're scrolling through social media, I have like my own cell phone over here. And once I take a, like a high quality photo with it, and then I upload it towards Instagram, what happened is that Instagram under the hood, it does the whole resizing process for us. So in order for the image that we've uploaded to fit within their predefined window on the application, and there's some things that needs to be taken into consideration, such as the aspect ratio, you know, what interpolation method to use. And also these are like problems that are commonly faced within OpenCV or when you're performing resizing using OpenCV. So most of the time, some people, once they get an image and they want to resize it, they end up not taking into account the aspect ratio. So once you resize the image without, you know, calculating the aspect ratio, all you get is some kind of scaled or distorted image. And we're going to also learn how to solve that problem in this tutorial. And the second issue is what interpolation methods you use. So the thing, you know, it's much easier to go from a larger image into a smaller image because we're already using known pixel values in order to compute or estimate the new pixel value on a smaller image. However, going from a smaller image into a much larger image, it's a bit quite difficult or it's, I would say it's not much of an easy task to perform. So we need to take into consideration what interpolation method we should use. So let's get started on how to resize an image while preserving the aspect ratio. So let's get started by first creating a new Python script called OpenCV resize.py. So first we're gonna import our boilerplate. So R parser for command line arguments and CV2 for OpenCV binding. And for argument parsing, we have a single switch, which is image, which receives the input image via our command line. So over here, we just loaded our image and displayed the screen. So let's execute that. Okay. So we can also check the size of our image. So we'll just print that as an info. Image size. So we have image that shape. Just run it again. So our image is 667 height and 1,200 pixels width. So let's say if we want to resize our image to become 667 pixels height and 600 pixels width while preserving the aspect ratio, what we should do, we just need to define resize image is equal to CV2 dot resize. As an input, we have the image, the dimension should be what? It should be our newly calculated width and height while preserving the acid ratio. So in order to do that, we need to calculate the ratio. So, so we say we wanted the width to be 600 pixels. And then to get the ratio between our new height and old height, we just need to call image.shape and that's in one. So to calculate the new dimension, it's going to be equals to what the height, which is basically what image dot shape of zero multiplied by the ratio. And what is the width? The width will be 600 pixels. I'm just going to wrap this over here, type cast this into an int or an integer, and then pass it in here as a dimension. And then finally, what interpolation method to use? So I'm going to use the interlinear. So now we're just going to visualize the cell screen and show what. Um, resize the width and resize image, then just add the weight. So let's visualize this. So we can see it's like this. So it's not supposed to be in this format because once as the dimension OpenCV expects it to be in the form of the width, then the height. So not in the reverse order in which OpenCV returns our image. So we just need to make that minor modification here. So 600 pixels width before the height. 
So if we run that again, we can see that our image has been resized to 600 pixels width, but in while preserving its act ratio, which is the height. So I has resized the image to 600 pixels width, as well as, you know, preserving the aspect ratio of the image. So what if we want to, instead of let's say resizing the width, what if we want to resize the height? How are we gonna do this? So what we need to do is like recalculate the ratio again. So this time, let's say 400 pixels. This time, let's say 400 pixels. So we're gonna divide our new height by the old height, which is image dot shape zero. And then to calculate the dimension, so remember that we first need to specify the width or the height. So the width will be what? End of what? The image dot shape of one. So that's like the old width multiplied by the ratio. And just make sure this is enclosed within the end parameter. Because, you know, as an input over here, it should not be a float. It must strictly be an integer. And then for the height, which is, you know, 400. So now let's just say resize image is equal to CV2 dot resize. What do you want to resize the image, the dimension and the interpolation method to use is CV2 dot interlinear. So we're going to, you know, display this. So resize height, resize image and add the weight key. So if we run this again, so we have the resize width and as well as resize height. And also we can also check the dimensions after resizing it. So let's say resize width. I'm just gonna paste this dot shape first two and uh, reuse this part over here. So resize height. So if we run it again, we can see that. We can see that the width is 600 pixels and the newly calculated height is 333. And when we resize the height of our image while preserving the aspect ratio, we can see the new height is 400 pixels and the newly calculated width is 719 pixels compared to the original image size. So of course, you know, when you're working on projects and you have to resize an image, of course, it's gonna look really dirty if we keep it like this. However, we can easily modify this into a function that we can easily call later on. So let's do that. So we're just going to define a new function resize as an input parameter. It's going to take in three arguments. So the image, the height, which will set to none, and as well as the width, which will also set to none. So usually when you're programming, you know, or when you're writing functions, it's good to define your base case, which is a simple case to a problem that we can handle directly. So we're just going to check if the height is none and the width is none. What are we going to do? We're just going to return the image because, you know, there's we literally we are literally not resizing any image over here. However, if this condition is not true, what we are going to do is to get the width and the height of the image. So we can do that by image dot shape, get the first two values using the index in, and then get the dimension of our image. So dimension and set it to none as default. So we're going to check if the height is not none. So if it was defined, what we're going to do is to calculate the ratio between the new height and the old height which we can derive is just height divided by what float of height, which is the old height. And the reason why I put it over here as float is because if, if this is an int and this is an int, we're just going to get an integer division. However, I don't want to perform an integer division. I want to be able to get the results, the ratio in form of a decimal. So now to calculate the new dimension of our image, we need to multiply what the ratio multiply width and then our height which is going to be as an input from whatever it's going to be passed over here when this function is called else if this condition doesn't hold what we're going to do is just you know calculate the ratio between what the width which is our new width divided by the float all of what the old width and then the dimension is just going to be equals to the width 
which is our new width, multiply by the ratio and the height is going to be what the ratio multiplied by our old height. So now in order to resize the image, all we need to do is call the resize function, pass in the image, then the dimension and what interpolation method to use. So we'll use the interlinear method. And then we're, what, what are we going to return? We're going to return the resize image, which is going to be set over here. So now let's like test out our function to make sure that everything is working. So let's say resize the image is going to be what? Resize, which is the function that we just created. We pass in the image and let's say the height of like 120 pixels. We can as well, you know, display you know, the dimensions of this, you know, resize image on our command line. So we say resize image dot show get the first two values, then visualize this the screen. So we just say resize height 120 pixels and resize image. Then just add the weight key. So once we run this, we get something like this. And you can see that the new height of that image is 120 pixels and the new width while preserving the aspect ratio is 215 pixels. And as well, you could also repeat the same process for, you know, the width and let's say 300 pixels. So we're just gonna, you know, modify this part over here to 300 pixels. So resize width and let's just run this again on the command line. And you can see once we resize the image, giving it a width of 300 pixels while preserving the aspect ratio, we get like, you know, the height, which is 166 pixels. So earlier on, we also made mention of different interpolation techniques to use while resizing our image, either going from a larger image into a smaller image or going from a smaller image into a larger image. And let's explore these techniques that OpenCV does actually provides us with. So a few of these interpolation methods, which we'll be going through, which OpenCV provides for us are the following. So first we have the interneurus, then we have the interlinear, the interarea, the intercubic, and then the interlancus interpolation method. So let's have a look in each of these, you know, interpolation methods and see how they affect our image when going from either a larger image into a smaller image or from a small image into a larger image. So let's actually start out by going from a smaller image into a larger image and see which technique actually works much better. So I'm just going to write a for loop which iterates over each and every single one of these interpolation methods that were actually defined within this list. So we have like a list within a list and then we'll apply each and every single one of these interpolation methods to our image. Let's actually iterate through that. So for name and inter mode in interpolation method, what we're going to do is just perform a resize on the image. So I'm just going to call this small ing. So as an input parameter is our image. So let's just use resize image over here for the width. I want it to be what the image, the shape of shape of one multiplied by four. And for the inter method, what we're just going to have is basically just the inter mode. So I haven't actually defined this. So if we scroll all the way back into the resize function that we've created, all we just need to do is just add like one more input argument called inter method. And as a default, it's going to be cv2 dot interlinear. And we're going to change this interpolation over here to become inter mode. So whatever that's going to be passed into here is going to affect what interpolation method to use. So let's continue. So we're just going to print our terminal information or what interpolation is currently taking place. So current interpolation method is what the name over there. So this is just the name part. So now we're just going to, you know, visualize this or screen. Let's say interpolation method is what the name So we're just going to add like an F over here and then the resize image, which is the image that we want to display to our screen. Then we just add like a weight key. So for this task, we're going to be using this image to be specific to N. You can see that it's quite small. However, when we resize our image, by the way, using different interpolation methods, we'll see which one is actually much better. 
for increasing the dimension of our pixel. So first we have like the into nearest, then followed by into linear. Then we have like into area, we have the into cubic, and then finally the into lances. And if you carefully, you know, analyze the outputs from this interpolation techniques, you can see that the into cubic is actually way much better when you resize a smaller image into a larger image, which is very, very crucial to understand. And it's also quite similar to interlinear. So the trick on actually how I tend to, you know, know which interpolation methods to use is like, if you intend on going from a smaller image into a larger image, then it's best to, you know, stick with the intercubic or the second interpolation method. However, intercubic tends to be much faster compared to the, the second method, because this uses a four by four kernel and this uses an eight by eight kernel, which requires more computation time. So if you want to go from a larger image into a smaller image, usually most of the time, you might actually want to stick with these three different techniques. However, as a default, you know, OpenCV uses interlinear, so you should stick with that one. So if interlinear doesn't work well for you, then I recommend, you know, you try out interneras, then if interneras doesn't actually work well for you, then, you know, you should actually try out inter area. So if you've liked this video up until now, be sure to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and also share this video to your friends and hit the subscribe button so that you will get notified every time that I make a post. I will appreciate that. Thank you.